When it comes to Israel and China, these are strange bedfellows. In sheer size and geopolitical orientation, these two states appear vastly different. China has 10 cities larger than Israel's entire population. China is the new land of opportunities. When we grew up, it was Israel was looking at uh, the US, maybe Europe. Today it's China. For Israeli companies who want to go global, China is becoming a must. Out of this interest comes a growing desire for Israeli goods and services. China is attracted to Israel's blazing technology sector, and Israel welcomes China's investments and potential as a research collaborator. We see more and more cooperation on technology, technology cooperation in different aspects, big companies and small companies. So definitely on all aspects of uh, the economic relation, we see significant growth. Trade between the two countries has surpassed $11 billion, a small figure when compared to Chinese trade with the US or Europe, but 200 times larger than it was just 25 years ago, prompting enthusiasm from Israel at the highest level. With uh, new technology, we can make people live longer, personalize their medicine, prevent a lot of the diseases that are available. All of that is happening um, uh, in exciting ways in Israel, and we're very excited about trying to bring this technology to China. Chinese industry has become critical to the future of the Israeli state. Chinese firms building key infrastructure, the Carmel Tunnels in Haifa, the light rail in Tel Aviv, and expanding the Ashdod and Haifa seaport. Yet, the relationship faces a rocky road as Israel navigates the choppy waters of the US-China trade war. When Chinese company looks at the US and Europe, they look at potential technology partner, but at the same time as a competitor. When they look at Israel, we have no competition with China. Israel will try to walk this tightrope as the startup nation continues to be snapped up by the land of the Red Dragon. Asha Westrop Evans, I-24 News. And now for more reaction to the story, we welcome Dr. Shira Efron, visiting fellow at the Institute for National Security Studies, and she's speaking to us from Ramat Gan in Israel. Dr. Efron, thank you so much for your time. So what do you make of these reports that Benjamin Netanyahu said he would review the participation of a Chinese-controlled company in a massive bid for a building a huge desalination plant? Now, is Israel between a rock and a hard place here? Can it afford to let this deal go, so to speak, to make Washington happy? Um, Good evening, and thank you for having me. Um, I think, first of all, that it was uh, a good call on the part of the Israeli government to say that it will review um, the final stage of a tender that was uh, issued a uh, long time ago. Uh, Israel does not have to let go of the deal, but it definitely has to review uh, this deal for its national security implication. Israel can certainly afford, uh, can afford to let go of a deal. Um, because Israel has other capabilities for power desalination. I only wish that uh, it would do so in advance and not only in response to U.S. pressure. Why do you say um, that? Why would you want Israel to do that in advance? What are your reasons? So it's not about the specific deal. It's not about um, uh, the, the, the specific company, that it's a Chinese company. Um, the idea is that every advance country in the world has a screening mechanism that examines foreign investments in critical infrastructure, and some countries have an expanded um, screening mechanism that also looks into other sectors, the technology sector. And Israel is just behind on that. Israel, for Israel's sake, not just to not to make the United States, the U.S. administration upset, needs to examine the implications of having a foreign entity, and presumably a foreign entity with ties to a national government. Uh, control uh, critical infrastructure. And this plan that we're talking about is no question a critical infrastructure facility. It would have produced, uh, it could produce uh, a quarter of uh, Israel's water consumption annually. It's located by an uh, Israeli Air Force base. Um, and the winning company will not only build the plan, but it will also uh, operate it for 25 years. So, I think those investigations and those examinations have to take place without, you know, the sort of like uh, the, the without the, without uh, raising U.S. ink. 
Now, is it fair to say that because of the American pressure, Chinese investments receive way more scrutiny than other foreign investments in Israel? How would you imagine Beijing would likely be responding to any kind of retraction or reneging on these kind of deals? So I think that the, U, the, 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 the issue in Israel it does not have to point to uh, Chinese investment uh, uh, specifically. The, the, Israel should screen foreign investments no matter which country they're coming from. However, because Israel is only doing so in response to U.S. pressure, it's clearly um, targeting the Chinese investments. The Chinese investments are not subject to more scrutiny now because nothing is subject to, to scrutiny at the moment. Um, however, by U.S. pressure on Israel, and Israel uh, responding to pressure, it's drawing fire and, put, and, 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 and putting the focus on China. I think it's uh, honestly uh, probably something that's very unpleasant for the government in Beijing to see um, that only that Israel is only examining um, uh, investments that are made by Chinese companies. And, and this goes back to my first point. Israel could preempt this crisis in Washington and also not humiliate uh, China, but just by just having a mechanism that screens for foreign investment and not every time responding to the U.S. and, you know, embarrassing China. Thank you so much for that insight, Dr. Shira Efron, speaking to us live from Ramat Gan here in Israel. We appreciate your time. Before the trip, they will also test the temperature. 到了到了工地现场以后，我们也会同时就是另外设置那个体温检测点，然后对这些所有的到工地现场的那些工人进行体温检测和登记，然后并所有人进入工地现场的时候，我们都会让他们用那个消毒酒精液进行消毒，才能进入我们的工地现场。公司对我们这块也就是。疫情期间对大家的生活呀，还有个人防护做得非常到位。所有的工人他们在作业的时候都会保持保持距离，基本上都会在两米左右或者是更远。虽然现在还是有疫情，但是我们也在努力推进工作，尽全力保证明年底完成本项目。这也是中国企业对以色列人民的一种承诺。中国中铁以色列片区呢，在做好自身防疫工作的同时，对外籍员工、外方合作伙伴宣讲我们项目部呃对防疫的管控措施，呃有效地缓解了外籍雇员和这个外方合作伙伴对疫情传播的担忧，实现了员工零疑似、零感染。Israel ranks number one in terms of medical device patents per capita. Med in Israel is an innovation exhibition for healthcare technology and equipment that's becoming well known. It's helping entrepreneurs and investors turn to the country's fast-growing startups. If you are going to mass produce this product in Israel or Europe, the cost is going to be very high. But if you set up your factory in China, not only is the cost low, the vast consumer market can help the company expand. Besides, it can also contribute to China's economic growth. It's a win-win. 2017 is the 25th anniversary since the establishment of China-Israel diplomatic relations. Governments from both sides have been discussing about how to strengthen their bilateral ties. Cooperation in medical industry is an integral part of this important relationship. China has a huge market for medical development and cooperation. It is our hope to further expand our market share here. Apart from its market potential, China and Israel would like to join hands in promoting research and innovation in healthcare field so that people from both countries can benefit from this two-way collaboration. Tracy Chang, CGTN. I'd like you to complete that sentence.
relationship with china is purely economic and relationship with india wow it's a strategic partnership it's much 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 more wider and deeper and stronger and the scope of it is much 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 bigger as i said two democracies with many many similarities with mutual trust mutual respect india is a strategic partner of israel that's how we see it it's one of our closest friends in the world uh, so it's much much different it's much more and it's you know it's open this is not something that we put under the it's very open it's very known uh, even china knows that the relations with india are different and it's understood and that's how it is because that's how we want it to be and so we know very well to balance and to control things to decide how we want to measure uh, and to conduct uh, our uh, relations with uh, other countries so india for israel is a strategic partner it's a precious friend so it's a friendship values which is much much beyond the economic relations Breaking news. For facing South China Sea conflict, Israel offers more military equipment to Philippines. Manila. Israel is offering more military equipment to sell to the Philippines, Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana said Monday. This is aside from the unmanned aerial vehicles UAV, radars, protective vests, which the country has already acquired from the said country, he added. You know we are buying a lot of equipment from Israel like UAVs, radars, protective vests, and they are offering some more, we will look into them," Lorenzana said Monday. The DND chief accompanied President Rodrigo Duterte in his first ever visit to Israel last week. Aside from the said equipment, the Philippines has also acquired the Rafael Advanced Defense Systems LTD Spiker Surface-to-Surface -surface Missile Systems for three of its multi-purpose assault craft, MPAC. Three more are to be acquired to arm an additional three MPAC units. Israel signed defense industry deals. Companies from the Philippines and Israel have signed agreements to facilitate the marketing and production of Israeli military equipment in the Southeast Asian country. The accords were signed during Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte's state visit to Israel, which concluded 6 September. According to a Philippine government statement, four defense-related agreements were signed relating to military vehicles, defense electronics, firearms, and ammunition. Two of the agreements involve Philippine Land Systems Company Stone of David Corporation, which signed Memoranda of Agreements MOAS, with Israeli firms Gaia Automotive Industries and MCTECHRF Technologies. The former MOA relates to cooperation on the marketing and promotion of tactical vehicles, including technology transfers to facilitate local production, while the latter will support collaboration on the development in military and intelligence products and hardware, said the government statement.